this lesson we will learn about bond energies, also called bond enthalpies, and how these can be used to calculate the energy change of a reaction. Every type of bond requires a certain amount of energy to break. The same amount of energy is released when that type of bond is made. We call this the bond energy or bond enthalpy. It is the amount of energy needed to break the covalent bonds in one mole of molecules in the gas state. Its unit is kilojoules per mole. The bond energy is based on the strength of attraction between the two nuclei and their shared bonding electrons. Each type of bond has a unique bond energy. We can use the bond energies to calculate the enthalpy change of reaction. So in this example, we are looking at the reaction between methane and chlorine changing into methane and hydrochloric acid. When we are calculating the enthalpy change from bond energies, all reactants and products will be in the gas state. And that's because they need to be in the gas state. All of the attractive forces holding the particles together need to have been broken before the covalent bonds within the molecule will break. In this table, we have the different bonds and their bond energies. So the C to H bond requires 414 kilojoules of energy to break one mole of C to H bonds. And likewise, that much energy is released when one mole of C to H bonds form. The first step in calculating the enthalpy change from bond enthalpy is to write the equation out, but change the arrow into a minus sign. So here we have the same equation as above, but instead of an arrow saying the reactants are turning into products, we have a minus sign saying it is the bond enthalpies of reactants minus the bond enthalpies of the products. The second step is to draw the molecule structure underneath. This will show us what bonds there are in each reactant and product. Here we have the structure for methane, chlorine gas, chloromethane and hydrochloric acid. And we can now clearly see what types of bonds there are in each molecule. Under this structure, we want to write the types of bonds and how many of each bond there are. So for this reaction, we have four C2H bonds in the methane and one chlorine to chlorine bond. And then in our products, we have three C2H bonds, one C to Cl bond and one H to Cl bond. You can just write the bonds broken and bonds made out so that this would be bonds broken minus bonds made, but it is much easier to make a mistake that way. The best way is to include all reactant bonds and all product bonds in your equation. Once you have all of the bonds and the number of each bond written out, you can replace the bonds with their bond energy. So in this case, the C to H bond has a bond energy of 414. So we have four times 414. The Cl to Cl bond has a bond energy of 242, and there's one of those bonds. So we have four times 414 plus 242, minus the bond energies of the products. So that's three times 414, the C to H bond, plus the one C to Cl bond, so plus 327, and the 1H to Cl bond, so plus 431. You then need to add up the bond energies for all of the reactants and all of the products. So in this case, the reactants come to a total value of 1898, and the products bond energies come to a value of 2000. We keep the minus in the same position, so we've got energy, bond energies of the reactants, minus bond energies of the products. The next step is to minus the product bond energies from the reactant bond energies. So in this case here, we have 1898 minus 2000, which is negative 802. Finally, we want to add the units 
for enthalpy change. We are looking at the kilojoules of energy released per mole of the species. So our unit is kilojoules per mole. So our answer for this one is negative 102 kilojoules per mole. We can rearrange the same formula to calculate the bond energy of one specific bond if we know the enthalpy change for the reaction. So in this example here we have hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen gas to turn into water. And this releases 470 kilojoules per mole. In this example, it's important to note that we no longer have a one-to-one -one ratio like we did in the previous example. Here we've got two hydrogen molecules reacting with one oxygen to produce two molecules or two moles of water. So the first step in finding the bond energy for the H2H bond is the same as for when we are calculating the energy change. We write the equation out and we change the arrow to a minus sign. This time we want to include our enthalpy change in our equation. The second step is also the same and we just draw the structure of each reactant and product out underneath the equation keeping the minus between the reactants and the products. Again, it's important to note the number of moles in each balanced equation. So here we have two moles of hydrogen gas, so we need to draw out two hydrogen molecules. Same thing with the water, we've got two moles of water, so we need to draw out two water molecules. Our third step is to write out the types of bonds and how many there are, and include the enthalpy change. So for this reaction, each hydrogen molecule has one H2H bond, but because there's two molecules, we have two times H2H bonds, one O double bond, O bond. It's also important to note whether it's a double bond or a single bond between each atom, because O single bond O has a different bond energy than O double bond O. And that's because with a double bond there's four shared electrons and so the attraction or the covalent bond is stronger and therefore it takes more energy to break than a single covalent bond. We then have minus four O to H bonds, two for each molecule. Just like last time, we want to replace the bonds with their bond energies. So in this case, we have two times question mark because we're not sure what the bond energy of the H2H bond is yet, plus 498, so the bond energy of the O double bond O, minus four times 463, the O to H bond. And that is going to equal negative 470 kilojoules per mole. Just like last time, we're going to add up the bond energies for the reactants and the bond energies for the products, but this time we are going to have a question mark where our two times H2H bond is. We keep the two times there though. In this step, we need to rearrange the equation to find the bond energy of the H2H bond. So we currently have two times question mark plus 498 minus 1852. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of the minus 1852 from the left hand side of the equation. But whatever we do to the left hand side we also have to do to the right hand side. So to get rid of the minus 1852, we need to plus 1852 to the left hand side. So now we have two times question mark plus 498 minus 1852 plus 1852, which equals zero. So we have two times question mark plus 498 minus zero. So we can ignore the zero, but we now have to plus 1852 
from the right hand side, so the side with the enthalpy change. So now we have negative 470 plus 1852. The next step would then be to get rid of the 498 from the left hand side of the equation. So 2 times question mark plus 498 equals negative 470 plus 1852. So to get rid of the 498, we need to minus 498 from the left hand side. So now we have 2 times question mark equals, and we have to minus 498 from the right hand side as well. So we've got 2 times question mark equals negative 470 plus 1852 minus 498. So if we add the right hand side together, that comes to a total of 884. So what we know is that 2 times the H2H bond gives us 884 kilojoules. But we want the bond energy for one H2H bond. And so there is an extra step here because we don't have a one to one ratio in our balanced equation at the start. So to find the bond enthalpy for one H2H bond, we need to go 884 divided by two. So essentially what we've done is divide both sides of the equation by two. So question mark times two divided by two gives you question mark and we have to divide the right hand side by two as well. So question mark equals 884 divided by two, which comes to 442. And then finally, we need to add the units. So the units for bond energy is kilojoules per mole. So we have the H2H bond equals 442 kilojoules per mole. So calculating bond energies the process is straightforward, but it's quite easy to make mistakes if you don't follow each step in the process, because it is so easy to miss the occasional bond. Even I will do that sometimes. So make sure you write out each type of bond and you draw the structure so you know you've included every bond. And also keep a close eye on the mole ratios in that original equation. In the lesson activity, there are a few examples so that you can have a go doing this too and practicing.